Good afternoon and welcome to St. Agnes Catholic Church. This evening we celebrate the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our readings can be found in the back of the hymnal, number 1,125. Our entrance hymn is number 628, Come Christians Join to Sing, number 628. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good job. 
first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. The leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, if you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. If you will, you can make me clean. This is what the, letter, the leper said as he approached our dear Lord. Leprosy was an awful disease. Thankfully, today, it's curable, but back then, it was a death sentence. When one was diagnosed with leprosy, that person was cast out from the community, forbidden to enter under pain of death. Also, all the belongings of the person were burned to prevent any kind of contagion from spreading. Leprosy, though, we think immediately of some like of corrosion of the outer parts, the fingers, things like that. But it begins inside. It attacks the nervous system. Saint Damien of Molokai, Father Damien, who really spent many years caring for the lepers at Molokai, 
one evening decided to soak his hot, tired feet in some warm water. Suddenly he realized he couldn't feel anything. That's when he realized he had leprosy. It starts with the nervous system. Only later do we see this external physical kind of corruption. So when our Lord cures this man, his whole life has changed. It's like he came from death to a new life, really sort of like a resurrection. My brothers and sisters, we don't have to worry, thank God, really about physical leprosy, ever contracting that, but we do have to worry about spiritual leprosy, this disease, a spiritual disease that can attack our spiritual nervous system. So when we do not take time to pray, when Mass just becomes a thing to do, and we allow our mind to just drift off and wonder, when we don't nourish our soul with spiritual leading, reading, we become numb, and that numbness starts taking over. Or when we allow ourselves to become so busy that we don't have time for anything spiritual, or allow ourselves to be consumed by so much media, social media, news, things like that, we start becoming numb. With that numbness, we start seeing then a comfort with venial sin. Could even lead to a comfort with mortal sin. This leads to alienation. Alienation between ourselves and God, with others, including our family members, and with ourselves. We no longer the person that God wants us to be, to have that dignity. So we always have to be mindful of keeping ourselves spiritually whole. Jesus responded to the man with a cure. And the man had said, remember, if you will, you can heal me. Well, our Lord really says to us, if you will, I can heal you. It's up to us. So we begin Lent this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. And it's a good time for all of us to take time to look at our lives and ask our Lord to heal us. Therefore, of course, during Lent, take time for a good confession. We have examinations of conscience available at different age levels. So make a good confession. Also, different spiritual exercises. Think about what you might want to give up, that sacrifice. But make it something that is going to bring you some freedom. We all can become attached to something. So let's give up something that no longer will take control of our lives, that we have to have that thing. So those are good practices. We could also, of course, Stations of the Cross on Friday evenings, make a holy hour once a week in the Adoration Chapel or even here at church. But those are good spiritual practices that bring healing. Also, nourish your soul. If you take time to look at the bulletin, which I hope you will do, you'll see on one of the pages these various activities of, at St. Agnes about Lent. So for instance, Ash Wednesday, of course, there's the Mary Magdalene retreat. 40 hours devotion will begin next Sunday. Father Jim Hudgens, who is one of our homegrown priests who grew up in this parish, his mom Peggy is still a parishioner here, he's coming to give the 40 hours talks. So make time for that. Spend time with our Lord. We have a seminar on Dante's Divine Comedy, a wonderful piece of literature that's very spiritual, that goes through hell, purgatory, and heaven. Then there's a 10-day retreat with Father Pinizzato about, you know who, St. Francis de Sales. Father Andrew Fisher is going to give a talk on the Spanish explorers who came to Virginia back in 1571. And then there's the talk on, of the Shroud of Turin by myself. So many different good things that we can do to really make Lent a time of renewal and healing. But as you know, in our diocese, if you've lived here for a while, it's also the time of the Bishop's Lenten Appeal. And that's why I, as pastor, am here instead of poor Father Andrew. He gets excused from all of this. Lucky him. 
Someday he'll be the pastor who gets to do this pitch. But anyway, we start with a letter from our bishop. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in this jubilee year for our diocese, the theme of the 2024 Bishop's Lenten Appeal is, Behold, I make all things new. As we look ahead to the momentous occasion of our 50-year golden anniversary in August, we're inspired with the desire to share what we have received from our Lord, especially by bringing others to greater faith in God as well as carrying out works of mercy. When we support the BLA, we help bring the glorious gift of Christ Jesus to thousands of people in need of spiritual, charitable, and educational assistance across our diocese. I respectfully ask that you consider prayerfully a sacrificial pledge to this important appeal. If your circumstances allow, your gift will be used to enrich and improve the lives of others and reveal to them the compassion of Christ. I am grateful to all of you who have given in the past to this appeal. Your continued sacrificial support to our diocesan church is truly a meaningful way of giving thanks to God and sharing the good news of the gospel. In a few moments, your pastor will guide you through the pledge process. Please be assured of my prayers for you through the intercession of Mary, our mother. May our Lord Jesus bless you abundantly now and always, sincerely in Christ, Michael F. Burbage, Bishop of Arlington. Pause for a moment. I've lived here all my life. So I remember when I was a senior in high school, 1974, when we learned we were going to become our own diocese, split from the Diocese of Richmond that used to take over the whole state. So with that in mind, I've seen the growth. Now I entered the seminary in 79, so 45 out of 50 years, you could say I've been working for the church. Well, when I was ordained, we had 60 diocesan priests. We now have over 160. When I was in seminary, we had about 15 seminarians. We right now have over about 40 seminarians, including our own Gabriel Godet, who's with us this evening. So we've been very blessed as a diocese. I've seen parishes created, and I founded Our Lady of Hope Parish in 2000 because of the growth in Loudoun County. So we've seen such good work in our diocese, but it's possible because you all help make it happen. For instance, Bishop Welsh back in 1980 wanted to start a new Catholic high school. We had O'Connell, we had Ireton, but that was it. So through the Bishop's Lenten appeal, he bought the old Fairfax High School, which was the first Paul VI. So my brothers and sisters, the key here is that we should give something. When you think about it, we're blessed as a diocese. We have vocations, we're growing. We aren't closing churches. We aren't saying, well, where will our next priest come from to staff a parish? We are blessed. So I encourage you, if you haven't done so already, to take time to give something. I think especially for you young people, to take time because this is an appeal that's going to benefit not only you, but your children. That's the key. And that's the way my parents always thought. It's not just about what will benefit them, it will benefit my brother, myself, and then my brother's kids. So there we go. Now with that, we have to do the pledge process, right? So we go through all of this. You see envelopes at the end of the pews, right? So please pass down the envelopes. Now, I have to, under holy obedience, do this, so you have to bear with me, right? And as I mentioned, I have been admonished because I've been too lenient with you all. So we have to do this properly. Now, good evening as your pastor. I want to thank you all who have already pledged this year to the Bishop's Lenten Appeal, as well as those who've given in past years. Every donation, no matter what the amount is, is important. 
And as I've mentioned, that's why I give, especially for our future seminarians who will be priests. Please know that all the monies collected for the Bishop's Lenten Appeal are restricted to the programs, offices, and ministries that are described in the appeal materials. And you'll find that in this week's bulletin also. These ministries benefit our own parish, like my office, the Office of Faith Formation. That's my other job in the diocese. We have programs that are based here that benefit all of us, so that's good. So I ask you to reflect on how you can make a truly sacrificial pledge to the best of your ability. I realize that each of us has different circumstances and the amount of our donation is unique to our own financial situation. However, we all have a responsibility to support our diocesan church through this appeal. My goal is that we could achieve 100% participation from our parish to the BLA. Now, with that, I will take you through the pledge process so that everyone can complete the form together. By going through this with you, it actually takes much less time. It allows me to pace myself so we can finish in a few minutes. Now, as I mentioned, <clears throat> bear with me. The bishop admonished me for being too lenient for being deficient, and so he even threatened to help or to send someone here to supervise me. Oh dear. So, here we go. William! Oh. William! Oh, no. It's Sister Mary Pecunia. Capu Pecunia means money in Latin. Hello, Sister. Oh, William, how are you? You're back. Yes, I am back. So, we'll get to work. Yes, sister. All right, here we go. For those filling out a pledge card, please complete the section with your name, spouse's name, address, and phone number. Please provide your email address, and I will give you directions. Pause a few seconds to allow time for this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ow. Okay. If you, so, if you already have contributed to the Bishop's Lenten Appeal by mail or online, please check the box in the center of the pledge envelope. To avoid duplication of your pledge, please do not fill out any additional pledge information on the right side of the form. If you have not already pledged, or by mail or online, you may make a one-time gift or a pledge now that can be paid through the year. Pledging is encouraged as it allows us to make a sacrificial gift that can be paid throughout the year. When you make a pledge, you will receive monthly reminder statements until your pledge is paid in full. And you can count on that. You may also go online to make payments to your pledge. Please refer to the right side of the pledge envelope and check the box or write in the amount of your pledge or gift in the space provided. Please now write the amount of your pledge on the total amount pledged. Pause for three seconds. One, two, three. Oh, okay. okay, if you wish to include a payment now, please write the amount of your payment on the amount enclosed line, then subtract this amount from the total pledge amount and write the balance on the last line. Please check the appropriate box on the left if your payment enclosed is a check or cash payment. If you want to pay your pledge by credit card or direct debit, you may go to the diocesan website or you may scan the QR code on the envelope to take you directly to the BLA's giving page or you can give your credit card to your pastor. Ooh, naughty, 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 naughty. Okay, if you, are, if you are not enclosing a payment now, please put a zero in the amount enclosed line. Ooh. Zeros are not good numbers unless they follow a big number. Okay, and write in the balance to be paid amount on that line. Pause for three seconds. One, two, 
please write the name of our parish, St. Agnes, on the line on the bottom left side so that you will receive the proper credit for your donation. If you are visiting, remember, our pew, your pledge. Write St. Agnes on the pause. Okay. Pause three. Oh, 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 so pause. Oh, pause three seconds. One, two, three. Pow. Okay, finally, on the front panel of the envelope, please write your name in the space provided. Please place your pledge envelope in the offertory basket. On behalf of Bishop Burbage and myself and Sister Mary Pecunia, I thank you for your pledge to the Bishop's Lenten Appeal. May God bless you. B-L-A, B-L-A, make your pledge today. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters, gathered as one to celebrate the good things we have received from our God, let us ask him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of his hearing. For all our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we will promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and religious freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice and peace among nations, especially Ukraine and the Middle East, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, diplomatic, and intelligence services to make peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith, and for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in mind or body, individually or in relationships, that the healing graces of the Holy, Holy Spirit will bring healing, comfort, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the release of the Israeli hostages held by Hamas, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits, through Christ our Lord. The second collection is to help pay for our parish assessment for the, for the Arlington Catholic Herald.
Our offertory hymn is number 650, Amazing Grace, number 650. <laughs> that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. <laughs>
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial, of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. 
In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with this sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, through those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For Amen. the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours Amen. now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our box collection this weekend is for the Red Cloud Sioux Indian School, staffed by the Jesuits on the Pine Ridge Reservation. The Boy Scouts are sponsoring a blood drive on Sunday, February 25th, in the Parish Hall. See, please see the bulletin for details, and please consider giving the gift of life uh, through your donation of blood. This afternoon, we... Uh, We'll celebrate Transform Transformation Sunday. There will be a special healing service beginning at 2.30 p.m. tomorrow, Sunday, uh, conducted by the Fathers of Mercy. And that's all. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke whom we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 642, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 642. We will sing verses 1 and 3.